Okay, so this is where we left off in um, the previous part. Um, and what we need to do now is just um, make sure that none of these errors have happened and then update the profile information. So we're going to do that using the empty sort of function. So if empty errors, i.e. if the errors array is still an empty array after these two checks, it means that none of those errors have occurred. So if that is true, we want to do sort of some type of thingy. And that thingy is going to be um, calling a new function, which is set profile info. And this function is going to take three parameters and it's going to update the user's profile. So the three parameters it's going to take are the email address, the about me section, and the location. Whoops. So obviously we haven't defined this function yet, so that's what we're going to do next. Let's go to our backend file and scroll to the bottom and I'm going to add it here. So we're going to define that function, set profile info. And the parameters it takes are email, about and whoops, and location. Let's just comment what this function does. Um, updates the current user's profile info. Just so that anyone looking at this code will know that it uses the current user that's logged in. So the first thing we need to do is sort of process the input, uh, make sure it's secure. So we're going to do that using the MySQL real escape string function and the HTML entities function. So um, but I suppose HTML ent entities is not strictly necessary for the uh, location, or I suppose the email address. But hmm. anyway, so we're going to define email as um, MySQL real escape string. Um, actually, uh, oh dear. <laughs> okay, that needs an equals. Uh, it's probably going to need two locations quite long. Um, so email, so we're escaping the email address. Um, I will actually use HTML entities here. Uh, the reason for that is that I'm not actually sure what the filter var function considers as valid. So I'll just to be make sure we're 100% safe, we will use HTML entities here. Um, it won't actually make any difference if uh, like if there aren't any H if there aren't any characters that make HTML entities, it won't do anything. Who could use HTML special chars anyway? We get too bogged down in that either. Anyway, moving on. Uh, about is the next thing. So about equals whoops. About equals MySQL real escape string. Um, about and we definitely need to apply HTML entities here. So HTML entities. That's spelled wrong. Uh, is that right? Probably not. Oh well. And we also need to apply the NL to BR function, which um, converts. Well, it doesn't convert. It keeps the new lines. It um, it replaces like a line break with a line break and a br tag. So it, yeah, okay. It adds br tags after any line breaks. There you go. That makes that's that's good. That makes sense. Um, we need to do that after uh, before mm, here. <laughs> we need to do that before we escape the string uh, because new lines are escaped, meaning that nl2br won't find any lines and it won't have any effect. So just here, we'll do nl2br. It also needs to be after HTML entities because it it introduces some HTML entities and they would be converted and we don't want that. Um, and finally the location is just going to be equal to MySQL real escape string location. Whoops, I don't want to save it, I mean I don't want to close it, so cancel. Um, and we definitely, don't need to, we definitely don't need to apply any HTML entities type functions here because if you remember, um, where's it gone? Edit profile. 
um, it has to match this expression uh, and none of those this won't allow any HTML entities to be inserted at all so we don't need to apply the that function here so now we have an, the sanitized information we need to run a query so we can define a new SQL variable because it's quite a sort of long query um, and it's going to be equal to update the table name which is users set and what the things we're going to be setting are the users whoops user email and we're setting that equal to a string and that string is going to be our email variable we're going to be setting the user about equal to another string whoops I want that and that's going to be our about variable and we are going to be um, setting the user location equal to another string which is going to be our location variable and we want to do that where the user ID is equal to the session uh, UID uh, and we're trusting this session variable because it's set at login which means that it should be set from the database basically um, so there's no way that this can be set by the user um, so we're going to trust that this variable is safe and then after we've defined the SQL we just need to run the query so SQL and that should now update the user's profile um, just quickly check over it looks okay to me but we'll find out in a moment um, so let's go to our edit profile page and we're actually calling this function here so the other thing we need to do is set up like the messages and stuff um, one thing we will do actually is um, change it, well not change it, I've, this was the plan from all along um, we're going to have it so that when the user enters their information here and like the form has been submitted the profile, the information they type in stays in the form um, we've done this previously by checking if down here like if this specific field is supplied then uh, then we output it as the value um, but because we already have something in the value we can just set this variable to the post variable post information um, if it's been set if not we get it from the database that also avoids an extra database query when we don't need it so what we can do is add this query uh, add this um, sort of function call here that does a, does a query into an else block like so and then obviously we, we need, still need to define the user info vari uh, variable so we need to define it in here as well so user info equals array because it is an array and it has three elements well no it we need three of its elements it has lots of elements but we only need the email the location and the about me section so email location about me section so they're the ones we actually use the others are a bit unnecessary I suppose so we're going to define those here so email it's obviously going to be, yeah, uh, is going to be equal to HTML entities um, we always call HTML entities here um, because this is going to be set regardless of if it's validated or not uh, so yeah so this will be set to whatever they type in basically so we need to call HTML entities because they might accidentally XSS themselves which would be rather bad but yeah anyway um, so HTML entities of post email and then I'm just going to copy this line down twice and I'm going to set the, um, the about me sort of section here and the location one at the bottom location so what this should do now is mean that um, well we can test all of our validation now but obviously we need to have it so it displays the error messages but it should mean that if I type in something that's invalid like that hit enter okay I've spelled, uh, every time uh, edit profile line 21 okay so it's hard to type that for some reason there we go so you see that the um, profile shouldn't have been updated but this um, has stayed basically so it's been kept from the um, form submission so whatever you type even if it's invalid like 
it stays in the form, so you don't have to like you can correct it. You don't have to type everything out again, basically, because you, this potentially could have a huge amount of fields, couldn't it? Uh, if you had like a large profile, so you wouldn't want to have to make the user like redo all their modifications if just to correct a small typo that they made or something. Anyway, um, so this should be functional now, but we're not going to test it quite yet because first we need to uh, output our messages and stuff down here. Um, so we're doing that in this little div tag here. Uh, and we're going to do the, it's basically the same as we always use. So we're going to check first if the errors array is set. Um, if it isn't, remember that it's only set if they um, have submitted the form. So we can just check if is set errors is false. That means they haven't submitted the form yet. So here we can just do echo um, 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 click update to edit your profile. A strange message, but never mind. Um, then we also we can also check else if. So now, um, well, okay, else if empty errors. And what this will mean is that um, the errors array is set because um, we'll only get here if this first condition is not true, which will only happen if is set errors is true because then it won't be false. Uh, hang on. Yeah, we'll only get right. Let me say that again. Uh, we'll only get to this check here if this first check is false, which will only happen if is set errors is true. Okay, so hopefully that, may, hopefully that makes sense. It's quite difficult to explain, really, but hopefully you're following along. Anyway, um, so we've got else if empty errors. That means that inside this block here, uh, the errors array is defined and it hasn't got any elements. It is empty, which means that the profile has been updated because no errors have occurred. So we're just going to do echo here. Echo, um, your profile has been updated. And then finally we need an else. Inside this else block, you'll only get here if the errors array is set. You only get here if the errors array is set and it's not empty, meaning there are errors. So in here we need to do what we always do, which I won't explain in too much detail. Um, so echo something, and that something is ul ul li li implode. I have gone over this before, so actually I'll do I'll do a basics video on form validation where I explain this method. So go and watch my video on form validation if you haven't. So what we're imploding, um, sort of on I guess, is a closing li tag and an opening one, and the array we're imploding is errors. So now we should be able to test our error checking. So let's go to our browser and just reload the page. You see we get this message, click update to edit your profile. If I enter something invalid, like I did before, hit update. You see we get your location must only contain this, and it's not. So if we just make it so it is that, hit update. Your profile has been updated with a slash. Whoops, don't want that, I want a full stop there. Um, so now we can check this again, if I hit update again, the slash has turned to a full stop, so that was my mistake. Um, so now if we um, actually change my profile, oh actually let's just check the invalid email address. If I end this email address, like if I remove that and hit update, email address you entered is not valid. I check both of them at the same time, both uh, errors appear. So if we just have a valid email address, well, I won't have that. And if I just change my location to UK, and let's just say I do um, testing updates, profile has been updated. If I just now reload my profile, you see this testing dot 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 has appeared. So that's basically the end of this tutorial. Um, we have created a page where you can now edit your profile. Um, obviously you can extend this to include your login system um, and to include any more profile information that you might want. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics of any sort of profile based system where you can have profiles. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. So thanks for watching and hopefully this has been of some use.